by ocean. We need this water to sustain life, but water can also be one of the most destructive forces on this planet. Tsunamis or giant ocean waves have wreaked havoc throughout history. The forces that create such massive waves are incredible. What's more, as a geologist, I find the stories about tsunamis truly astounding. So if you don't know which great civilization may have been devastated by a tsunami, how a father and son managed to surf the highest wave ever recorded and survive, or why millions of Americans could be at risk from a mega tsunami, then stay around as I reveal 10 things you didn't know about tsunamis. I'm here on La Palma, one of the Canary Islands. Now, most people come to the Canaries to get away from home and relax, but not me. I've come here because this little island might one day generate a massive tsunami, a mega tsunami. We'll explore that story later, but first I've got nine other tsunami stories to cover from around the world. And we'll begin with one tsunami that's burned into our memories, certainly etched into my mind, and that's the Boxing Day tsunami of 2004, which caused destruction around the Indian Ocean. On the morning of the 26th of December 2004, a huge underwater earthquake ripped apart the seafloor northwest of Sumatra, Indonesia. When it subsided, no one had any idea that the tremors had generated something even more deadly, a tsunami. A chain of waves panned out across the Indian Ocean, travelling at the speed of a jet plane, hitting coastlines all around the Indian Ocean. The images of waves and death were unforgettable. I watched these images, amazed at how easily people's lives and homes are swept away. The tsunami had hit the nearest shores with such force it rose to over 60 feet and surged inland for up to three miles. It destroyed everything in its path. Leaving a devastated Sumatra behind, the tsunami continued towards Thailand. The waves arrived faster than people could run, hurling them against buildings and trees and then snatching them out to sea. Meanwhile, the westbound waves roared across the Indian Ocean, slamming into Sri Lanka and even as far as the East African coastline. By the end, the Boxing Day tsunami had claimed more than 225,000 lives in 11 different countries from as far afield as Indonesia and South Africa. So just what makes tsunami waves so different and so much more destructive than ordinary storm waves? Well, an ocean wave is caused by the effect of the wind on the surface of the sea. But a tsunami is triggered when a huge volume of water, not just on the surface, but right down to the ocean floor, is shifted in one sudden violent motion. This rapid movement can happen after a volcanic eruption or a landslide, or an underwater earthquake. When an earthquake, for example, cracks the ocean floor, one side of the fault is thrust up. This then pushes up the whole body of water above the fracture as well, creating a wave on the surface of the sea that becomes a tsunami. In mid-ocean, the ripples of a tsunami have a small wave height and a very long wave length. That's the distance from the front of the wave to the back of the wave, and this can be hundreds of miles long. But as the tsunami reaches land, it goes through a frightening transformation. From the shore, the first sign that something's wrong may be the water along the beach being sucked back towards the source of the tsunami. This is called drawback. Then, as the tsunami itself nears land, the shallow water acts like a brake, slowing the front of the wave dramatically, but the back of the wave, hundreds of miles behind, is still travelling fast it now catches up, causing the front of the wave to rear up into a wall of water. But there's worse to come. Instead of breaking on shore, the whole length of the wave sweeps onto land, engulfing everything in its path. And that's what happened December the 26th, 2004. For a geologist like me, it was obvious that some truly catastrophic geological event had happened to create the tsunami. And indeed, it was caused by a huge earthquake. But this was no ordinary earthquake. And to understand just how different this earthquake was, a group of scientists set off across the Indian Ocean to study it. They wanted to find actual evidence of the earthquake on the sea floor to work out how it had caused such a huge tsunami. What they were to discover on this expedition would shock them. But first, they would have to actually find the fracture in the Earth's crust. Below the ship lies a vast undersea chain of mountains, as high as the Alps. They've been pushed up over millions of years by the movement between two giant tectonic plates. Tectonic plates are slabs of the Earth's crust colliding together, and they're often the cause of deep ocean earthquakes, where one plate is pushed underneath the other. Somewhere below this spot, the seabed ruptured for many hundreds of miles on December the 26th, 2004. This is where the tsunami was born. Using remote equipment, scientists are now able to scan the ocean bed in great detail. We came down. 
while we were unmarked. It didn't take long before they quickly identified a dramatic geological feature. The line they had found looked like it could be a fracture caused by an earthquake. It was a sheer vertical cliff thrust out of the seabed, a wall large enough to have displaced a huge amount of water and the physical evidence of a massive earthquake. But to be sure this wasn't an ancient fault, they needed to inspect the top. If it showed a sharp sawtoothed edge, it would prove this was a recent fault. Okay, here, here we go, here, here we go. And at the top, there it was, a rough sawtoothed edge, proof that this cliff had been formed recently. The scientists had found the earthquake fault. But no one was expecting what they discovered next. As they climbed higher, something else loomed out of the darkness. A second cliff beyond the first, and this one was enormous. These two sheer cliff faces were the evidence that proved to the scientists that this had been no ordinary earthquake. This was what they call a megathrust earthquake. Unlike ordinary earthquakes, megathrust earthquakes rupture over many hundreds of miles and are always over a magnitude 9. They're the largest earthquakes in the world. Deep under the Indian Ocean, two tectonic plates have been pushing against each other for hundreds of years. The edges of these plates were locked together, building enormous stresses and bending the upper plate like a giant spring. And on December 26, 2004, this pressure reached the breaking point. 